I've been watching TED Talks since my early teens. So the moment I was given the opportunity to be a TEDx talker, I jumped at it. I didn't have a clue what I was going to talk to you all about today though, just that it would likely be revolved some way around technology. So, I should imagine, like most of the other people presenting alongside me today, the first thing I did was jump on YouTube and got into the deep rabbit hole of watching hundreds of different TED Talks to see what other people had previously spoken on around the subject. It turns out that after over 100,000 TED and TEDx talks, there's been one on nearly everything. However, there was one thing that stood out to me a lot, and that was the fear factor, which is often placed around the future of technology, and in particular, artificial intelligence. Just have a look at some of the titles which I came across. As you can see, they get progressively worse until we get to this final one, AI, it will kill us. And this got me thinking, is it common that people have a fear of technology? So, ironically, I got on Google and Reddit and read through lots of different articles and forums to see what people really had to think. And it's true, people are very scared for the future of technology. But why is this? I think there are two main contributing factors. The first is that in my lifetime, which is relatively short, I would say, um, I've gone from having a large grey box in my living room which could perform the simplest of tasks at the most painful of rates, through to having something literally a thousand times more powerful in my pocket at all times. And then the second, I think, is the news and online content. I'm sure you've all seen them. Headlines like this one here, which I should point out was very misleading. Um, and then things like the Boston Dynamics robots doing backflips, like the kind of thing that you'd see on Terminator. Um, but I don't think this should be the case. I think we should be excited for the future of technology. And that's what I'm hoping my talk can do today, to talk to you about some of the things which are up and coming that are potentially life-saving, and hopefully get you as excited about technology as I am. Now, the best way for me to do that, I think, is to talk to you about my relationship with technology and how I've personally seen and utilized it to improve mine and thousands of other people's lives around me. At this current time in my life, I probably fall under the category of a technology entrepreneur. But previous to this, I was involved in the management team of a charity working with vulnerable children in rural Nepal. And this is where I first started to see how technology could have a positive impact on the world. It was a Saturday morning, and I'd just woken up after my first good night's sleep in probably about three weeks, since we had just returned from our latest trip in Nepal. And like most other 20 year olds at the time, I grabbed my phone and opened up Facebook to begin probably 20 or 30 minutes of aimless scrolling through my timeline. However, this time was different because I saw this, Nepal earthquake, safety check. Now, I'm not sure whether Facebook still thought that I was in the country or whether they were being quite clever and saying, hey, we know you're back, but your friends and family might not, so let them know you're safe. Either way, it played two purposes. It meant that I could indeed let my friends and family know that I was back and that I was safe, which probably saved me a lot of phone calls and texts. But second, and most importantly for me, it meant that almost instantly, I knew that my friends and my colleagues in the country were unaffected by the disaster at the time. Now, we then used this same social media platform alongside online donation platforms to drum up tens of thousands of pounds in donations in a matter of days. For a small charity like ours, this would have previously been impossible, requiring us to go from door to door with pen and paper, as well as taking significantly longer, this would have likely resulted in a fraction of the amount of money raised. With this speed, it meant that we were back on a plane within two days to begin what would turn out to be a two year long period of critical earthquake relief. Whilst in the country, I experienced incredible technologies such as drones being used to assess damaged buildings and check for survivors, through to satellite communication being used to provide links to the most remote of areas. However, you're probably saying, well, social media, online donation platforms, even drones, you know, they've, they've been about for 10, 12 years, so we've all become very accustomed to them. 
But this is going to happen time and time again. Some of the things that I'm going to talk about in a minute might seem totally unmanageable, like these might have 10 years ago, but they will soon become reality. Whilst in the country, we experienced a number of potentially life-threatening situations, such as aftershocks, landslides, and we even got ambushed ones. At the same time, my mother, who lives alone, fell from a ladder whilst renovating her house. She wasn't seriously injured, but it could have been so much worse. And this got me thinking, what would happen if either myself or my mother were involved in the unthinkable and there was nobody there to call for help? So I started to try and find a product which could do just that. And I couldn't find anything, so like most other millennials, I got myself and a few other people in a room with some pizza and a beer, and I said, we're going to create a product, we're going to make a business out of it. However, it wasn't as easy as that. The existing technologies on the market that we were going to look to utilise just weren't fit for purpose and resulted in incredible amounts of false alarms. So nobody would have bought the product. So we then started to look into artificial intelligence and how we could utilise that to more accurately detect these accidents. We've now created a product which uses AI to learn a user's movements and create trends. This means that we can detect abnormalities that would indicate somebody's been involved in an accident, and if they have, within seconds of that accident, send for help to whoever needs it and whoever can get them the help as quickly as possible. We're now also working on being able to predict and prevent these accidents through a similar type of AI, with an ultimate goal of being able to save lives through innovative technology. As well as AI, you have technologies such as augmented reality, internet of things and quantum computing. And I'm not going to go into the depths of each of those because they're all quite, quite complicated, but they're all having literally billions of pounds poured into them on a weekly basis, all with the hope of creating the next big thing. Now, most of these are purely for profit. However, there are a number of truly amazing startups which are looking to create a positive impact through these technologies. One of the best examples that I can find of this starts with this girl, Mia. Now, Mia, like a vast majority of babies born with uh, cognitive heart defects, um, had uh, a very complex set of surgeries lined up. Normally, doctors would be going in slightly unknown and this could result in a very long set of surgeries. However, this time was slightly different. Doctors use 3D scanning and 3D printing technologies to be able to print an almost identical model of Mia's heart. This meant that they knew what they could expect before the surgery. They believed that this saved almost two hours of, of the time of her being on the operating bed and ultimately leading to a much more successful set of surgeries. This isn't the only way that 3D printing is being used in the medical industry. Currently, there are some of the greatest minds looking at how they can use this 3D printing technology to be able to 3D print living organs capable of being able to be implanted into the hundreds of thousands of people waiting on the organ donor list. Clinical trials are currently underway and it's expected that the first 3D printed organ could be implanted within this decade. Now, Right on the other end of the scale, we have burgers. You're probably going, how the hell do burgers fit into life-saving technology? Well, at the moment, there are some small and very large companies looking at how they can utilize these new technologies to be able to create almost identical meat-like substitutes capable of being able to replace farmed meat, which, if you're unaware, is one of the largest contributors to greenhouse gases, which is one of the biggest problems that our world is facing at the moment. If they can successfully do this through technologies such as 3D printing, they can reduce that impact, potentially having a huge effect on our world. Earlier, I spoke to you about drones being used in Nepal. Now, this isn't the only way drones are being used in third world countries. In 2016, a startup called Zipline entered Rwanda with a big vision. They wanted to be able to deliver uh, life-saving bloods and medicines to rural parts of Rwanda, which can take currently up to five hours. 
Now, through their drone technology, they can deliver to over 13 million people in the country within 30 minutes, which has the potential to save lives. There's a very nice quote on their website from someone called Alice that says, previously, I thought they were mad, these drones, but that was until one of them saved my life. I spoke to you about how my company is using AI to be able to detect and predict accidents. We're definitely not the only company that's doing that. For the past few years, some of the leading car manufacturers have been using artificial intelligence and cameras and machine vision to be able to monitor the roads of the vehicles that they, that they sell. With this, it means that they can provide assisted driving, such as braking or cornering, to be able to lower the chance of collisions. Now, this isn't a fully autonomous vehicle, but it is one of the first steps towards it. And fully autonomous vehicles are very interesting things. There was a recent study conducted that said that 71% of Americans are fearful of fully autonomous vehicles. Yet, at the same time, there was another study conducted that said that fully autonomous vehicles could reduce the chance of collisions by up to 90%, which over the next decade has the potential to save over 10 million lives. And I think this sums my talk up really well. Although technology is having a positive impact on every single person in this world at the moment, and has the potential to save so many lives, we're all incredibly fearful of what could come. But I don't think this should be the case. I think we should be embracing technology. And in return, the innovators should be carefully considering the ethics and the responsibilities of what they're looking to create. Because executed correctly, technology has the greatest potential to have a massive impact on the world around us and something that we desperately need. But if we don't accept this, that innovation might not happen. And I, for one, am someone that is very excited to see that future. Thank you.